The extracurricular activity portion of your forecast application may seem just like a repeat of your CV, but what if it's actually more than that? Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist and a PGY1 resident who is wanting to help you get the residency of your dreams and in turn that career you've always been looking for. Before we jump in, I do want to do a little disclaimer here that the advice I'm sharing in this video is based on my own personal experience, which may be different from yours. So when you look at this advice that I'm giving you, think about it from your perspective and take the pieces that you need and leave those that you don't. Okay, with that in mind, here we go. Your extracurricular activities in pharmacy school can really set you apart from your competition. Whether you did a lot of leadership activities at the national or state levels, or maybe you conducted a ton of awesome research. Whatever you have done, it's great to highlight it here because it can definitely push you over the edge and get you that interview that you've been looking for. This is really great opportunity to show the program what you can offer them. So here are some of my best tips for this section. Make sure you include absolutely everything that is on your CV. Yes, it seems like it's very repetitive because it is. However, the difference between your CV and the extracurricular activity section is that this portion is searchable to your programs, which not every program uses this feature, but you don't know if the programs you're applying to do or don't, and there's probably a combination of the two. What you don't want to do is leave something off because it's on your CV and not include it in that extracurricular portion and then miss an opportunity or miss something about you because they only look in that section and search for certain topics. Unlike your CV, you want to do descriptions for everything, again, because it is searchable content. And this is a little bit of an opportunity for you to explain some of the things that you have done. For example, on your CV, you may have a scholarship and on your CV, it's just the name of the scholarship and what date you got it. But in this section, you can include the requirements for that. So you had to maintain a certain GPA, be an organizational leader, volunteer in the community, whatever it may be, you can include all those things because then they understand why you got that scholarship and that some of those skills that you have can be beneficial to them as well. The idea here is to give a little bit more information and context to the material that is on your CV, even without them interviewing you. You don't want to give too much away because you want to be able to talk about things that maybe aren't included on there in your interview, but you want to give them just enough that they know how special and important that experience was for you. Some of them may only require one line, like that scholarship, but there are others that may require more. What I recommend is three to four bullet points really the most important things that you want to highlight from whatever experience you're talking about. Some of them you may only need two, but if you can do more, that's great too. You should structure these like you would any description that you put on your CV. So for example, if it's a past tense, you conducted research on XYZ. Versus if you're currently doing it, you conduct research on XYZ. The idea here is you keep the correct tense for whatever time frame it is going on right now. It's also important for you to note that the screen's formatting, I'm going to be honest, it just kind of sucks. It's like old text. You can't really tell what it's going to look like whenever you submit that to the program, and that's completely understandable. So what I recommend for you to do is I put everything in a Word document for each of those points, knew exactly what I was going to do, and then I copied and pasted it over. I made sure each point entered down because it came across correctly whenever they printed out the application. If you do this, just make sure you double check that everything copy and paste over correctly and you're not missing any lines or anything looks a little wonky. For work experiences, I recommend highlighting any patient interaction you have. If you counseled patients, if you help deliver medication to patients, if you did med histories or med recs or whatever it was that you were doing, if it interacts with patients, put it on there. It is so crucial that you get patient interaction because most residencies, you have a lot of patient interaction. You should also include in this section any special skills you've gained from your job. For example, I did a lot of sterile compounding where I was at. So sterile compounding, code response, non-sterile compounding, 
Maybe you trained other people. Maybe you helped with the hire and fire process for other interns. If you did anything like that or were a leader in a certain area, all of this is important stuff to highlight in that work experience because it's gonna set you apart from somebody who worked a job where they served only as a technician role. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, but if you did more above and beyond what a normal technician role would and did more of those intern tasks, then that is going to look great on your application and you should really highlight that. For publications, there's a lot of things you can include here. So include any newsletter articles you wrote, anything for a magazine or any professional publications for a journal also are included here. So there's a lot of pieces you could put in and really highlight that you've done more writing maybe than you realize right up front. Make sure that those are all up to date and that you can talk about them on your interviews as well. For presentations, you can include a lot of things. So you can include journal clubs that you did, anything you did on rotations, maybe you did a case presentation or a guideline review. Anything like that is a presentation. Anything you did for school is a presentation. So all of those pieces should be in there, as well as any research presentation. So if you presented a poster at mid-year or another state association, include that as well. All of those are in this lovely umbrella that is presentations. If you have the opportunity to include in there who you spoke to, so if it was medical students or medical residents or other pharmacy students, it doesn't matter, but if you could talk about who you talked to, especially if you talked, like I did a journal club for attending in medical residence, that's very different than doing it for student pharmacist and more of what you might do as a resident. In the honors and awards section, I think it's always good to highlight why you got it and why you're qualified for that award when you got it, as well as who gave it to you. For leadership roles, it can be a little bit difficult to narrow down to three or four bullet points because oftentimes in one role, you may wear many different hats. However, it's important to highlight the big skills that are gonna help you, such as something that you did that really required a lot of communication skills like organizing events or contacting speakers, or maybe you dealt with money and you needed to do stuff with the budget and that takes a lot of organization. So find those skills within those three or four bullet points that they can pull out and be like, wow, that required a lot of organization or wow, they must be a really good communicator if they were able to coordinate this many events. That's the kind of thing that you really want to highlight. For volunteer events, it's great to highlight what organization you are with, especially if you've done it numerous times, that's awesome to highlight, or if you are a coordinator in any sort of way, those are benefits as well to highlighting those volunteer events you've done. For each of these sections, you really wanna make sure that you use keywords if they apply to your application, such as president, national, state, regional, those different things that are gonna set you apart. Maybe that doesn't apply to you and that is fine, but in these cases, make sure you include good descriptions that are consistent throughout and have somebody that you know review it for grammar and make sure you're consistent with that as well. As always, make sure you keep it honest. If you put it in a description, you better be able to back it up and talk about it. You don't wanna over-exaggerate what you did for something. If you were a volunteer and you helped do blood glucose screenings, tell them that's what you did. You don't have to pretend like you coordinated the event. You can't always be the one who's doing something in charge and you wanna be able to talk about whatever you did because they're probably gonna ask you about it if it's that big. So keep it honest, keep it good, and you will do great. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I'm gonna be doing tons more residency videos. You can also check out some of my other residency prep videos in the description below. If you do have any questions at all, please leave them in that comments below. I'm going to be checking these up until I know the deadlines go until like January 6th-ish plus. So I'm gonna be checking those messages every single day and responding to you to make sure that you are 100% prepared to hit that submit button. Good luck with your residency applications and I will see you next time. Bye.